Hey everybody and welcome back to Let's Play CCLP3. We are on level 136 and we got 14 levels left in this set, including this one. And they've it's basically gotten to the point now where these levels have become complex enough that I'm going to try to explain what I'm going to do before I actually do it. Because I think that would be the most fair thing to do with some of this stuff. So with this level, Grand Prix, this is actually a rather interesting uh, level and has a rather fascinating story behind it. Get your blocks through the track and into the watery finish line where the exit awaits. Now that area is refer that hint is referring to this area over here. And you can see there's a mechanism here that governs how we're going to get the blocks up here. Now, I originally based this level on the design of an escape level where Essentially, you had to get two spheres, like marbles, that slid around a track, and it was very similarly shaped. And then once you get, got them to the end, you had to use one to help get the other one in, but then that first one couldn't get in. You had to take it around another time, which was quite a twist. So I'll show you over here some of the stuff we'll be facing. We got this fireball cloner and tank button. We can just drown this teeth right here. And then we got these tanks. Now right here, your natural inclination when you get to this point is for anyone to think, oh, there are two pairs of recessed walls here, and I would need to use one for each block. Well, it turns out you don't want to do that because when you take that one block around for the victory lap, you don't really have any space to do that over here using the other path because you're going to have to park this block in front of this and you need a trap button to hold it down. So you need to do this first where you bring one block here, push the other one there, and then on the victory lap you can use the other set of recessed walls. And I'll show you a few other things. One other notable thing is that you can also use the fireball in a rather interesting twist. Like you can set it on a path where it would go and go to that trap button below me, or excuse me, the toggle button below me, and push it twice, like every 54 seconds I think. And that can be rather useful if you want to mitigate some of the weights that, or some of the backtracking that you do for toggle walls uh, to be switched and stuff. There's also some busts that involve slide delay, and at least one that we don't know about yet, particularly because Pi Guy just managed to set a new record on this. And you also have this room with bugs that you'll need to use the blocks on. And note that up there that we have a pair of fire boots, which will be great to get that green key with. So that's pretty much all that we have to deal with here. So with that in mind, let's play. And while I do this, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something that I said a few videos ago. Uh, you might recall back around level 119, I think it was, um, I said some stuff about the entitlement mentality on the internet and I feel like I was a little mean-spirited. I got some comments about that that little rant, and uh, one of them mentioned that it sounded vaguely judgmental. And you know, to be perfectly fair, that was true. You know, it did come across that way, and I didn't mean for it to be, but that is pretty much how it came across. And I wanted to apologize for that. Um, I, I understand that you know the way you say things sometimes can really influence how they come across, and I could definitely could have said a lot of those things with a little bit more grace than I did. And I just wanted to say that right now, but also to bring some clarity to some of the stuff I said too. Um, one of the other comments mentioned that you know there are people who really are legitimate victims in the world who suffer from things like abuse and you know racism and sexism and things like that and I totally agree with that. I would be the first in line to stand up for people who are marginalized like that. Um, the stuff I was talking more about in that video was more people who aren't really suffering from anything like that and just find joy in being marginalized because there are people like that out there and I've kind of gotten into that in other videos so I won't talk about it here again. But along with that, I think there is a something to be said when we are dealing with people who do struggle with stuff about how we handle it. And I want to be careful about the way I, I handle this because everyone is different. You know, everyone handles things in their own way. And, you know, that's part of what makes us unique and human. And I never want to dismiss how someone does something just because it's not the way I do something. But I do think there are some rather unhealthy things to do if you're someone who has gone through 
you know, a very traumatic experience and you're trying to recover from it, like you recognize, okay, that was a bad thing and I really want to, you know, do something about that. There are some things that you could do that are probably not good. And I say probably not good um, with a caveat that, you know, this is not, you know, an, an end-all, be-all, you know, universal thing. But generally speaking, I've seen enough people in my life do these things that they can be very harmful. And I'm saying these not as someone who has never struggled or, you know, never been through anything like this, but as someone who has. I haven't really gotten into much of my personal story here on this channel, but for those of you who don't know, when I was really young, I grew up with a very cult-like group of people who, for lack of a better way of putting it, were very insular and judgmental. And I don't want to go into all the details and rant about that here because that's not really going to be something that most people can relate to. I may talk about it in the future, but suffice it to say, you know, the good news was is that uh, well, the bad news was, first of all, that there was a lot of different forms of abuse that existed in this environment. Um, the good news was is that, you know, I got to a point eventually, um, and it only took like 15 years after the fact, but I got to a point where I recognized that sucking it up, as some people might say, was not going to work. And it's for that reason that I would, I would never want to tell anyone oh, you just need to get over it when it comes to a big weighty emotional issue. Because you can't just get over it. I mean, you have to really s strip it down and deal with it and, you know, get down and dirty. And it's, cr you know, it's, it's a big thing. It's not just an instant fix, you know. So I totally acknowledge that, and I would be the first to admit that. Um, but in the wake of doing that, you know, I found myself asking a lot of questions and feeling a lot of crazy, intense emotions. And I think the best example of this, like to illustrate, is the movie Tangled, where Rapunzel is escaping the oppression of the witch who is locking her in the tower and all that. And you know, she gets outside and she's like, oh, "I'm free!" Woo, 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 woo. And oh wait, no, 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 this is terrible. I'm doing something wrong. And but I'm free. And you know, it, it, she just waffles back and forth emotionally. And really, that is an accurate picture of what it's like to come out of that. I mean, it's kind of funny in the movie, but there's something profound about that. Well. Eventually, I connected with other survivors of, you know, uh, situations like that. But then I discovered something that was rather, I don't know if disturbing is a good word to put it, but it was, it was definitely cause for concern. And I'll get to what that is here in a minute. But first of all, let me go and talk about Vulcan. This is another level I design, and it's honestly a, one of those levels that uh, was one of my levels to end all other levels type of things, and in this case it was cloning. Uh, that was the gameplay of the day here. I wanted to make a level that basically surpassed Cloner's Maze in difficulty when it came to cloning stuff, and yeah, it would. oh, and I already messed that up. That was dumb. Let's not do that again. That was silly. Um, actually, let me just take you on a tour of this. So, we have this opening room, and we have to get all these trap buttons um, hit and everything. And then, over here, we have a path that we can't go through right now. We have a tank button that can be pressed only once. And then over in this area, we can go through here. There's a thief here. And then we have a block. This block doesn't seem very useful at first. But, we do have like a little cloner's maze type thing here. Where we could get fireballs to explode those bombs, and these bombs, and then finally, these bombs. However, there's really no indication of what we can do to explode this bomb, or this bomb. Well, let me show you what we can do. So, we go up here, and we have this fireball cloner, and we have a bunch of doors. I think it really featured like a door maze kind of thing for fireballs like this. We also have a number of bombs around the area, and there are a few different ways you can do this with collisions, but I'm going to do this the intended way for this Let's Play. Um, so you may be tempted to think, oh, we get two keys here. Let's open this yellow door and explode this bomb. Eh, you can't do that. So what you have to do is you have to first open only this red door, and at that point you'd have only a yellow key, and then the fireball would loop around over here, and then it's going to blow, explode this bomb, and you can explode the next bomb. You'll get another red key, and then you have to have the fireball go around this way, 
turn over here and explode this. And then you get a red, a green, or a red, a yellow, and a blue. So then what you'd do is you'd open up this yellow. The fireball would then loop around here. And then what you'd do is then, then you might think, oh, wait a second. I can just go over here um, like this. Um, which actually I think could work. Um, wait a second, why wouldn't I do... I know there's a reason why you can't do that. Hang on. Right, because this yellow door is not there. Okay, so yeah, this yellow door is gone. So what you'd do is you'd open up the blue door, and then you'd go all the way around here, loop here, and then the fireballs would go out here. Now, the reason why you want to go out here, this may seem useless at first, but you can do two things. One is that there's a block behind this yellow door, uh, which let me go ahead and just explode those, that bomb so I can show you this. So I explode this, get the keys, and if I were to go through here, I can then get this block out and position it right where I'm standing. And in doing so, what I can do by doing that is I can send the fireball down through the traps. And what that's going to do is it's going to lead the fireball down into the section with the cloner's maze into the bottom, and I can use the block to direct it into the middle bomb. Okay, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. And then I can push that block into the water to my right and then explode this bomb to get the green key. And then after that, it's just a simple matter of using my two remaining red keys to open up this door below me and then this door over here. And then the fireballs would loop around and explode this bomb. I would then get the blue key, open up this green door and this blue door um, after, because I would have the green key by that point. And then they would explode this bomb for the final red key. And that red key is what I'd use over here to get to the exit. The suction boots are just a pointless red herring. So that's this section. And then up here, we have this area where we have an interesting puzzle. We have a glider that's circling around, and this glider appears to be pointless, but it's actually not. Notice that there's a path there with a force floor. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to send the glider down, and that glider is ultimately going to explode the far right bomb in the cloner's maze room. And then you can use the remaining blocks to direct these fireballs from the cloner into the bombs over here. You also notice that there's a blue button over here and a hint that reads, the red button on the ice slide at far left is connected to the clone machine next to the trap column. So, um, basically what you have to figure out is that, well for one thing, there is a clone machine up here. And this clones a fireball that if the toggles were in the reverse state, would then go down that very ice slide and hit that button. But I can only clone one of those and I really can't do anything with it up here. Uh, the only other thing that can be done, and I'll show you what that is in a minute, um, is that it can go into the button over here. Now why would I want to do that? Well the thing that we have to figure out is that in this section over here, looping around this way, um, and I'll have to explode some bombs to really show this. Um, so let me do that first. But basically, if the block's here, the fireball will come down those traps and explode that bomb. And then the glider will come down and then hit that wall right here. And then it's going to go all the way over and hit the bomb over there. So yeah, a lot of lateral thinking in this level. So the final piece I need to show you is that you need to see that there's two bombs there that need to be exploded by that clone machine the one that's next to the trap column. And the way you do this is you clone a fireball, let it go around while the tank's in that position, and then that will just go drown. But then once we change the toggle state to open up the way for the other fireball from the top left, that one is going to go up and drown in the water above that cloner. And then when I, uh, <clears throat> then I can press the tank button after I switch the toggles. And then the other fireball is going to come down and then it's going to not go into where the open toggle wall is, but it'll instead go all the way over here and then go into the bottom trap. So that's going to be how that's uh, opened up. And then what I do is I would then open up the green door down here and then press the second tank button so that the tank can go all the way down and hit the trap button, which ultimately controls the trap by the exit. So that's Vulcan in a nutshell. So I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this now. So anyway, um, I was talking with a friend of mine last night about this you know, whole issue of how to care for survivors of, you know, different kinds of, you know, systemic abuse when it comes to 
victims like this or you know even just individualized abuse like you know sexual abuse or you know just things like that that are really serious that no one really seems to talk about very much um, and one of the things that we noticed um, and she's noticed it a lot more just because she's been more involved with these kinds of groups than, than I have personally is that there is a tendency to deal with surface issues and kind of avoid the deeper stuff. And I'm not trying to say this from a place of judgment. You know, I'm trying to say this because this is honestly a really genuine concern. And I've fallen for this trap too. You know, I'm not above any of this stuff. You know, I've, and I think that's partially just because when you come out of an oppressive environment, especially something that's like a cult, there is a focus pretty much on how everything looks. And it's very easy, I think, to carry that focus into where you go next. Just because, you know, it's not something that you even realize is there. You know, you don't even realize you're doing it. Well, if you're not really dealing with the, the base, you know, foundational ideology behind, you know, the problem, the problem is never really going to get solved. Especially, you know, if it's a matter that's really internal. You know, if it's something that is a matter of the heart, you know, no amount of don't do this or, you know, stuff like that is really going to solve the problem. You know, it can only really be solved by, you know, getting down deep and nitty gritty. So one of the things that we noticed was that, you know, in the context of trying to remain safe, and, you know, again, this is a very valid concern, you know, you want to make sure that you have a safe place for people. There have been people who have taken that to basically mean, oh wait, I forgot to put the block, whoops. Who have been, they've, there have been people who have basically taken safety to mean people will basically validate every single thing I say and I can never be wrong about stuff. And see, I don't really agree that that's safety. I don't think that's safety. I mean, yeah, you may feel safe for a little bit, but eventually there's going to be some eruption and there's going to be conflict in that environment just because all, there's going to be something that's going to upset that sense of quote-unquote safety. It's not going to last for forever. And um, I'll give you a classic example. This, uh, this, this girl that I was talking with last night, this friend of mine, recently joined this group that was a secret closed group on Facebook. And there was a guy who really wanted to join it. And, you know, everyone has to be approved, you know, as part of a, a secret group on Facebook. Uh, wait, did I already send one through there? I probably did. Let me just go ahead and clone another one. But anyway, there was this guy who wanted to join the group, right? And, you know, people needed to vet him to make sure that he wasn't, you know, an abusive person. And that's an understandable concern right there, you know. But the way they were doing this was pretty much... It was rather ironic. They were pretty much conducting this witch hunt on this guy, and they were they were saying, you know, well, he, and they were pointing out this very nondescript article of clothing that he was wearing, and saying he's wearing those kind of clothes, therefore he's not a safe person. And I was just staring at this, going, really? I, I mean, I was just dumbfounded by the whole thing. I. And I just realized I just totally messed that up. Um, I mean, I was just totally blindsided by that because, you know, that was pretty much the way things were where we came from was, you know, if someone is dressed a certain way, they can't be trusted. And, you know, all this other stuff that was, you know, pretty much crap. And here are these people were that, you know, they were, you know, totally willing to reject, you know, what they recognized was a problem, you know, with this place that they came out of, this organization that, you know, was very legalistic and judgmental and everything but yet they were doing exactly the same thing and I was like the irony of this is well I don't want to say hilarious because this is really serious this is not okay but yet it's happening and it's happening because we're not really addressing the root of the issue you know we're not really addressing that that methodology is just not a good healthy thing so it's stuff like that. That's what I'm. That, that's the kind of stuff that bothers me. It's like if you're just going to be in a place like a Facebook group like that, in which everyone is 
safe, but what that really means is that everyone thinks exactly the same way as you do, that's not really a very healthy place to be. I mean, it really isn't. Um, and, you know, to me, I, I'm, you know, I understand that this is a personal preference thing, but really, it's not just a personal preference. I mean, this is a healthy thing, you know, for anybody, I think, is that, you know, if a real, actual, healthy place is where there are people of differing opinions who can get together and acknowledge that, no, we're not all going to agree, but we all value each other. We all value the integrity of our opinions. We acknowledge that we hold differences, but our value as human beings is not at all inexorably tied to what we think. You know, we're valuable human beings because we're human beings. And everybody is a valuable human being, regardless of what they think. But, you know, whenever you're tying your value to what you think, you get into these situations like this where if you think the wrong things, then you're immediately marginalized. And it's just not a good place to be. So that's kind of what I was getting at with this whole victim thing, is that it can be very easy, and let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It can be very easy you know, when you're trying to deal with brokenness in your life, um, to acknowledge that it's there, but then just splash it around and not really take any steps to really, you know, get healing, like actual healing. And what actual healing looks like for everyone who comes out of stuff like this, it's, it's always going to be different. You know, I acknowledge that. I, I don't deny that, you know, people are you know, naturally going to differ when it comes to stuff like this and how they handle it. But I don't think that just staying in one in that place and even enjoying it and finding empowerment in it really helps anybody. And that was what I was trying to get at in the video. I wasn't trying to belittle anyone who struggles or, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it's... I, I want to be one of the first people to acknowledge that, you know, people have struggles and that they need to be addressed and not just, you know, swept under the rug and, you know, just totally ignored because that's not going to help them. Not at all. So I hope, you know, my heart in this is clear and I hope that, you know, this doesn't come across as harsh or anything because that's not what I all, at all want to communicate here. It's just that I've seen so many people who have been digging themselves more and more into a hole because they don't have people in their life who can really... Oh, wait a minute. Crap, I think I just messed this up. Yeah, okay. So I was supposed to hit the toggle button first, not do what I just did there. That was really stupid. Um, I've just seen so many people who've gotten into these holes and, you know have not really done anything that is actually, you know, helpful as far as getting actual help. And I don't say that, again, I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm above it. I'm saying that because it's natural and I've struggled with it. You know, I remember, you know, like I said earlier, I remember back when I was younger, I didn't really want to acknowledge that I had issues. You know, I remember when I first started LPing on this channel, LPing for me was just kind of you know, an escape route. You know, I just wanted to escape from everything. And that's one reason why I, I kind of left, you know. I recognized that, you know, I was on my own now and there really wasn't an escape anymore. I had to face life now. And it was hard at first because there were things there that, you know, because I had become so adjusted to the way things were, they were normal. And I took for granted a lot of things that became normal to me. And I took for granted a lot of my friends and a lot of my structures I had in day-to-day -day life and, you know, just things that I valued, but I didn't really value them in a way that, uh, where I recognized that, you know, they were a constant that I needed to acknowledge. And eventually, you know, I got to the point when I moved here that I had to say, you know, I had to come to grips with my past, you know, where I came from. And I had to say, hey, you know, I need to find people in my life who can speak truth into my life and, you know, help me through some stuff, you know. 
who can fill in some of the blanks that you know I recognize I have as a result of coming out of a situation like this. And it's hard to admit that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying it's as easy as saying, well, I'm just going to change right now and that's it. You know, it's, it's not. But the first step is acknowledging that there is a problem. The second step is acknowledging that you can't solve a problem by employing the methodology that got you into the problem in the first place. And it's a hard thing because if you're used to, you know, if you come out of like an abusive organization like I did, you know, it's really hard to think that anything else is normal. I mean, really, it, it's tough. And I'll be the first to admit that. But it is possible, though. It is totally possible to find help, uh, whether it's professionally or whether it's, you know, through counseling or whether it's through, you know, friends who can support you or family that understand, you know. It is possible to find hope and healing. Um, and it's a process, you know, and I, I want to I make sure I acknowledge that because I just totally ruined this again. Wow. This is not going well. So earlier I actually did record this level and I, uh, I had some issues with the recording, like it got all glitchy and stuff. And I saw it after I was done and I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be holding on to that video. And to top it all off, there was this very loud noise that I heard while I was recording and I looked outside and there was this airplane and it was it had all this smoke behind it and it was going wildly around in the sky and at first I was like oh my goodness that plane is going to totally crash and then I realized oh wait a second it's Memorial Day and the Air Force Academy is literally just a few miles away and I was like okay that makes more sense they're doing an air show for Memorial Day but it was so loud that you could hear it in the recording so between that and the glitch, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to start all over again. And it's nice because I feel like I was able to communicate what I was trying to say with, you know, everything I just said in the last several minutes right there a little bit better than I originally did. So, yeah, I, I really hope all that made sense and that, you know, it's you, you can hear like where I'm coming from and that, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk or anything like that. I, I hope that's that's evident. I, I really want to help people, but, you know, there's there's only so much you can do when it comes to helping other people get through some of this stuff. You can encourage them, but at the end of the day, you know, they have to acknowledge, you know, yes, I actually want to be helped. And it's been hard for me. You know, sometimes I've had to just, you know, lay some of these situations aside and say, you know, I can't do any more here. You know, eventually they're going to have to come to that realization in their own time you know, when they're ready to move on and find that healing, you know. But in the interim, you know, I, I guess I just, it's been so hard watching people just find other people who also struggle and just basically enable, you know, bad behavior or bad attitudes or, you know, just silly things. And it's, it's, it's a really crazy world out there. It really is. Okay, so let's not mess this up for once. This, it's funny, like when I did this before, I got this on like the first try. I don't know what happened with this. Okay, let me actually, there you go. All right, this time, push it there, then there. This one goes here, that one goes there. If you know where that's from, you get five points. Okay, so from this point, I just need to do this little trick over there and clone again. There's also some people who have made, you've done a solution where you have the glider clone the fireballs. Personally, it, you know, that's not really what I originally intended, but it is an interesting little twist if you want to go that route. Okay, this time I'm not going to press the button. I'm going to actually do this the right way. So right here, let's get these doors out of the way and get that bomb blown up. That popping noise is getting a little irritating. 
Oh, let me get the uh, green key while we're at it, as well as this chip, now that we're done with that. All right. There we go. So there should be a, a bomb here. There we go, blown up. Excellent. And then let's blow this bomb up. Get that out of the way. All right. And then we have the key for the exit. So we should be all done with that room. I'm going to take the tank button and press it. And then I'm going to make the clone in the upper left. So let us do that. All right. So now the way it should be clear for this this fireball to do its thing on the final trap button. So we should hear two bombs. There's one. Is the other one? There you go. There you are. Okay, so the other one exploded. So now we should be all set to go around once more and collect everything that's remaining. And then we should be good to exit. So don't hit the button yet. I'm going to go and open that. The bold route for this level definitely requires you to bust this. It involves collisions and some other crazy stuff. And I'm not going to get into that here because I don't want to reveal any secrets. Sorry to anyone who was hoping for that. All right, we got that. And then we got this guy. And then we got this one. And then finally, this one. And it's just a simple matter of exiting. So yep, that is Vulcan. Very fun level, I think. It's a little overboard on difficulty, but I think it ended up being okay as a level. Um, I think I would have made a few things a little bit more obvious, but it's open-ended enough that it's interesting still. Anyway, moving on to Water Slide. This level, this is interesting. This is a Pie Guy level, and I'm going to show you basically what's going on here. Okay, so notice over here that there is this... Um, teeth and normally I would actually go on the right so if I cross back over here that glider would hit that tr that trap button. Notice that there was also a glider that got cloned here so it makes it impossible to get the chip that's required. So that glider was cloned by this block hitting this clone button up here. What we want to have happen is we want to have a glider cloner clone but after I get the chip and then with that button pressed and then once that happens this other block cloner up here will spew a block out, and then I would push that block all the way to the exit before the glider comes around and presses this trap button, which is also connected to that trap where the glider got released. So I hope that made sense. Let me uh, try this. So you have to be really timing conscientious here, and I was not. Yeah, that was a fail. Let's try that again. Eh. Eh. Okay, trying to be less fancy here. Nah! <laughs> wow. Come on. Oh, since I failed, let me show you where the pie is for this level. Here it is. <laughs> wow. So yeah, the reason why I'm not pushing this into water is because I do want to clone a glider. I just don't want that to happen right away. Okay, there we go. That should be good enough. Eh, okay. I'm hoping that's enough time. Eh, I don't know. Eh, yeah. That was a fail. Normally, I'm not bad at this. Like, before when I tried recording earlier, this went well. Okay, barely made that. There we go. Water slide complete. I could play rotation, but I think I'm going to save this for next time. Here's my plan. Here's kind of the itinerary I've got here. 
So level 144 is considered to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest level in all of CC history. And I really want to dedicate a whole video to that, or if at least I get through it in a pretty reasonable time, I may do one or two more levels after it. Probably just one though. But in that case, I want to end the next video at level 143. So between the next few levels, we should have enough for one video. I'm planning to just play back my solution for level 140, just because the intended route is just not very LP friendly, just because it involves timing and some other, it's, it's just a, a mess to play and it's really tedious too. So I'm gonna basically explain both methods, but there is a busted routes that's really awesome to use and I'll just show that. And then the other levels are pretty simple as far as just a, a solve. So I think we should be okay. This level is a pretty monstrous one, but um, it's fun to explain and it's fairly decent to go through. So we'll take care of it next time. So I think I'll just go ahead and stop here for now. Thanks guys for watching and everything. Thanks for listening to my ramblings here. Uh, I, I really do appreciate your comments a lot. I tried to reply to some comments this morning and stuff. So um, thanks for, you know, just the feedback and everything. I, I really appreciate it a lot. And uh, next time I'm going to take on this level and uh, some others. So, yeah, catch you on the flip side. I'll see you then.